Good morning, everybody. I got it rolling. And welcome to another beautiful day here at AMC. We're so lucky to have you here. We're so blessed to have you in our presence to be able to worship all together. Um, quite a busy week for us. Well, mostly me here at the church and Pastor Tim, I guess. That's perfect. Um, I want to remind you about VBS. Starts tonight. It's not too late. Uh, make sure you're. It's easier to sign up online. Not that you can't at the door, but it's much easier for us if you do online so we're not, we don't have the backup. You know, remember those old BBS backups where you have everyone sign it up and it's a line of like seven? Yeah, we don't want that anymore. <laughs> so it's on the Facebook page of both Gathering and AUMC. Also, if you need to sign someone else up, um, come see me. I can help with that as well. So just a reminder, now until Thursday, 6 to 8. And there will be food. I was just... We just confirmed that. I, I was never told that before, but there is food there. So if you have someone coming, food is provided. Some kick food about 30 minutes. All right. Let, uh, it's such a beautiful day to come to the presence of the Lord, worship. And again, I will say it over and over again. It's been my huge kick. Don't take Sundays for granted. There's only 52 a year, and if that's, that is if you can make it at all. Um, it's such a small percentage of our time here, right? getting together. Most of the time we're just on our own or with our spouse or with our families. But just getting together with a bunch of different Christians is such a unique experience. And if we waste one, we're wasting a ton of time. So let's come into the presence of the Lord, ready to worship, ready to go, ready to worship Him for who He is. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day. We think you can be here and worship you. We thank you that you do give us a church to attend. That you give us a space to be with you that we can offset some of the things that are going on in our lives. I pray that this may be a place of worship, of who you are, what you've done, and what you will do in the future. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please stand for opening praise this morning?
Uh, one is, uh, one of the praises is that Brene Cope is uh, much improved from last week. Uh, she, I saw her Friday, and Jerry, you may have a more recent report than that. I have nothing. But she was moved up to fifth floor, uh, and uh, when you're in on second floor in ICU, moving up to fifth floor is a good thing. And uh, she was hooked up to a lot less stuff, and she was able to talk, and so uh, it, it was really good to be able to see uh, Renee. And then uh, here are some of the other requests that we have. Uh, we're praying uh, the Beyond the Walls ministry that we're praying for is Naomi's Heart uh, ministry. This is a ministry in the Philippines uh, run by Christy and Dan Ward. Uh, they have been here uh, a few times and, and spoke about their ministry. And I know that some of you are actually uh, supporting that ministry. You've adopted students that they're ministering to. They, they've got churches and they've got a school. Uh, they've got prison ministry. Uh, there's just a lot happening there. Uh, we want to remember the Bell Choir. They uh, have the summer off, but they'll be uh, getting started before we know it. Uh, the staff person we're praying for is me. <laughs> Debbie said, Amen. <laughs> Actually, you pray for me, I'll preach better. <laughs> you may listen better, too. <laughs> Uh, and we're praying for Marker's Chapel and Pastor Tamara Gerber, and uh, then also Old York Church and Pastor Sam and Serena Hoffman. I uh, want to pray for VBS that's starting tonight. Any other praises or prayer things that you'd like to mention? Yes? Uh, and Keys is having some health difficulties. We want to pray for her. Yes, Mark? I laid in much prayer this week. I haven't used my cane all week for the, the prayers of the So Mark is healing, and uh, and uh, his leg is much better. He hasn't used the cane all week. Anything else? Yes. We have a 13th grandchild now. A 13th grandchild? But he's 13 years old. But he's 13 years old. <laughs> and his daughter is, is adopting him. Yeah, Case and Brecken have adopted a 13-year-old boy. We just wanted a family, and I was out. Okay, great news. Chris? Band camp is starting this week, so you would like prayer for that? <laughs> All right, good deal, good deal. Anybody else? I was reading the scripture today, and it was from Psalm 54, and it says, But God is my help. And Psalms was facing some stuff, but God is my helper. That, that phrase uh, resonated with me today. It, you know, we can be facing lots of stuff. Uh, our month can last longer than our money, but God is our help. Uh, we can be facing big decisions, but God is our help. We can be experiencing some relationship. Anybody ever experienced relationship conflict? <laughs> and it's just eating your lunch. We can experience relationship conflict, but God is our help. Uh, we may not know what to do, but God is our help. Aren't you glad we serve a God who knows? Uh, would you sing with me the prayer song?
that we have an opportunity to enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We are so thankful that we have the promise that where your people gather in your name, and you are present, you show up. And uh, Lord, we thank you that you're here today. Uh, God, we give you praise that you're a God of greatness, a God of goodness, a God of love, a God of mercy, uh, that you are uh, a holy God, that you are righteous altogether, that you always do uh, what is right. Lord, we give you praise for that. Lord, we would acknowledge today that, God, we haven't always got it right this week. Uh, there have been times that we've failed in what we've said, uh, the things that we've allowed our mind to concentrate on, uh, even what we've done. Uh, God, I, I pray that, that you would bring your forgiveness to bear in our lives. Brothers and sisters, if you would just spend a, a couple of minutes asking the uh, Lord to search your heart, and uh, would you just confess anything that you need to confess to Him right now, knowing that our God forgives. Give us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we'll be accepting your tithes and offerings. King 
But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So all the elders, elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, but when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all the people. Are what all the other people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly, and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the world words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and, and uh, make them serve with his chariots and horses, and they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters and make them perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and use your <coughs> vintage and give it, it to the officials and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks, and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. <clears throat> but the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then he will be like, we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel heard all that the people said, he repeated it to the Lord. The Lord answered, listen to them and give them a king. Then Samuel said to the Israelites, everyone go back to your own town. This is the word of the Lord. I don't. 
Israel, throughout its entire history, goes down and then it goes up and it goes down and it goes up. And less high this time, but way lower. And then it goes right here. And, you know, that's where we're at. We are in a time of ups and downs. And maybe as you go into, where is Israel now? Israel is not the most consistent of nations. And throughout this time, God has not abandoned them still. Right? He's been sending them people called judges. Judges are spiritual and military and political leaders that come in, who are appointed by God, and fix what's broken. One of the most common verses in the Old Testament is, and then Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and then something happens. Uh, this is the time we're just coming out of. A time where you'd assume if God saves you a ton, you'd see him as the leader. You'd see him as a force. But we'll talk about more of how they view God in a few minutes. But I just want to set it up. A very long period of time of ups and downs of... Israel exists, well, Israel is a slave. Well, now we're powerful, now we're not again. Now we are, now we're not. A time of subjugation and a time of victory. So I'm guessing you get the concept of where we are. So, now thinking of that, we have Samuel. Uh, probably a name that's fairly common to some of you. Um, he is the last person we consider to be a judge. So, bringing Israel out of time of deep need, out of kind of into a spiritual awakening, per se. And Samuel's a very interesting character, and someday we'll go through him a little bit more. But we are entering the story today at a time where he is old. He, at a time where he probably is trying to retire, trying to get out of it, trying to push his duties on his sons. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Hey, I'm the head priest the high priest. I'm the leader of this area. Okay, I'm going to train my kids to do a similar thing, just like they did back then, where if you were a carpenter, you trained your sons to be a carpenter. If you were a baker, you trained your sons to be a baker. So this, should, this whole cycle just makes sense. Let's train my sons to take over for me when I am done. Great little thought didn't work out for them. Uh, for one reason or another, his sons turn away. As you can probably understand, it's not exactly uncommon to see any leader become corrupt. It was very common in the Bible. It's very common today. It, like, when you have power, you end up screwing it up somehow. It's very common for us to do that. So, and this is no different. The Bible times are no different. So, who knows it, who's at fault here? All we know is that the the current leaders, or the ones who are taking the power, are accepting bribes and perverting justice. That's a big problem. Um, these problems aren't the best to sit back and do nothing about. Uh, these problems are a something to be dealt with pretty quickly, because I don't know if you know, once justice starts getting perverted, once people start taking bribes, you can't really trust anything anymore. So Israel's got a big problem on our hands, and we need to find a solution. So, now that I've set this up, I'm going to show a movie clip, and it will make more sense as I explain it. But one of, and it's become one of my favorite movies, granted it's because it's when I grew up. I think I was about 12 when this movie came out, and it's the movie Cars. Are, are uh, any of you familiar with the movie Cars? I think I'm not cool. Um, Cars is a great movie with some great ideas to it, but I really wanted to get this one out today because it popped in my mind while I was writing the sermon. Sheriff, is he making another run for it? No, no. He ran out of asphalt in the middle of the night and asked me if he could come down here. All he's trying to do is make that their turn. This ain't asphalt, son. This is dirt. Oh, great. What do you want? He 
here to glow? You don't have three-wheel brakes, so you've got to pitch it hard, break it loose, and, and just drive it with a throttle. Give it too much, you'll be out of the dirt and into the tools. So you're a judge, a doctor, and a racing expert. I'll put it simple. If you're going hard enough left, you'll find yourself turning right. Oh, right. That makes perfect sense. Turn right to go left. Yes! Thank you! Or should I say no thank you? Because in opposite world, maybe that really means thank you! Crazy grandpa car. What an idiot! First and Second Kings a lot, 
uh, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings a lot during school because I love the stories of the old kings. And I would look at Israel as though I have nothing to do with them. I'd never be that stupid. But the problem is we also reject God's direction in our lives pretty constantly. And sometimes, what he wants us to do doesn't make a ton of sense to us. This solution they come up with makes a lot of sense, right? It's what everyone else did. It's been kind of proven to somewhat work throughout history. Even today, we, have, we don't have the same kind of system, but we always have to have a leader up top doing something. We always, You see, it's just a system that we're used to. Not saying that's right or wrong for us, but for them, they've had a they've had a track record of success with judges. They've had a track record of that succeeding very well when they go to God, cry out to Him, and He saves them. So in this situation, it 100% would have been advantageous for them to go to God, say, "What do you want us to do?" and then to do whatever He said. Right? This isn't the first time they faced problems. This is not even close to the next problem they faced. They were taken over a ton in judges. So this is very small, but instead of go to God, they said, we got this God, you just sit in the background. And in all of this, in an attempt to reject Samuel and do what they wanted, they ended up rejecting out the process. Even though I don't know if it was insanely intentional, or they thought, man, we should reject God right now, but they definitely didn't go there. So that's the first step. The first step is we're going to take control for ourselves. Okay, so if we're taking control for ourselves, we're kind of pushing God on the side. Then where do we get our answers from? I don't know if you know, there's not a ton of original thoughts, right? There, there's stuff that's unique about us. There's stuff that we think that's unique. There's ways about going things that are unique. But we end up seeing in history that we fall into a lot of the same traps. We do a lot of the same things, and the concepts are really, really, really similar. When humanity gets together and makes something, no matter what time in history, they look very similar. So, they're not just going to come up with a solution from nowhere. They're going to look around them and let society take over their lives. So, when we are stuck with a question, we don't go to God, usually, we end up looking at other answers. What does the world say we should do? That makes a ton of sense. Uh, this is not the best map because I couldn't find one that actually spread the screen without being awful. So you might not be able to read every single word up there, but the concept remains the same. Israel is not a separate, like a country that is separated from the world very well. There is a lot of little, and if you Yep, there you go. A lot of little countries surrounding them that really don't have a natural border to them. There are some. There's some rivers that separate stuff. But, and, and once they cross the Jordan, there's not a ton separating nation from, nations from Israel. Their borders are pretty open, and since they didn't have GPS or location back then, I'm sure that the borders kind of blended together. So society was right on their front doorstep. The c countries and customs around them were there. They could see what they were doing. They, they knew about what their cultures were, what their customs were, and how they solved their problems. And one of the big things is that almost every other nation around them had a king. Oh. So, let's just do that, right? That seems like a great solution to our problem. Instead of letting God pick our person, let's just pick our person for ourselves. Let's go out and get a guy that looks like everybody else. Let's go be like everyone else so they can stop making fun of us as a not real nation. 
Sounds like a great idea, right? No, it's not. And, and I mentioned these verses before, but it's something that Israel did pretty constantly in Judges, and this is the first time it's kind of used. And then in Judges 2, 11, 11 and 12 state, um, Then the Israelites did evil in the, size of the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. They forsook God, uh, the Lord. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods and peoples around them. They aroused the Lord's anger. So this isn't new. This is something they did pretty constantly, but this is the first time that they, in my opinion, wanted to forsake the Lord for good. Right? They fell a lot to those countries around them, right? They, they would bring in other gods, they would bring in idols, they would bring in ways of worship that we talked about last week that are just downright disgusting. An affront to God himself. The things that God purged the land for, and they just fell for it right over again. And after all these trials and tribulations of falling and falling again because they listened to the people around them, they were ready to commit to it. They were ready to just say, that is the lifestyle we want for good. And it's really sad to see that. The problem is, is if we are looking to society for what we need to do in our lives, we are going to be led in a direction that doesn't make any sense anymore. That skirts scripture, that skirts God, and travels us in a direction into a place that we never thought we'd be. 1 John 2, 15-17 is one of my favorite verses to portray this fact. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If any, if anyone loves the world, uh, if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires will pass away, but whoever does the will of God will live forever. I am not talking, when I say these things, I always want to state this, it's not like the world always has bad ideas. There's societal changes that we all need to make, right? Um, I didn't drive here in a horse and buggy, right? I, I didn't just walk here from Fremont, and probably if I did, I wouldn't be going to this church, I'd just be going to one right beside my house, right? But there's changes that we make. But they're always with God in mind. But in everything that the world does, there's some truth mixed with a lot of... Uh, there's some truth in it, and there's a lot of lies. Having the leader for them wasn't bad. But having a king was. So what did they end up getting? They ended up getting Saul. The tallest guy. The good-looking dude. Right? The guy that made sense. Military record. Everything made sense for this dude to be their king. He was the guy. If any other nation was choosing their king within Israel, they're picking this dude. Right? And he lasts in the eyes of God a very, very, very short time. He fails almost immediately, and he continues to live for himself for the rest of his reign. Ends up being rejected by God in the end, where him, he knows him and his family aren't going to be kings anymore. Because he failed so badly. All of these warnings in this chapter of Samuel come to pass. God, even after being rejected, this is a big one, even though he's rejected, God didn't abandon Israel at any point. Right? He was rejected straight up, and he's like, I'm going to send them the, a gigantic warning. The majority of this passage is warning. That doing this will end in your demise. You will suffer under the hands of these rulers. This is not a good idea, and they rejected it. 
So he gives them what they want, a little taste of what it's going to be like. Saul ends up murdering, pillaging, going to wars he shouldn't have gone to, trying to kill David on multiple occasions. And just overall being a dude that didn't lead Israel correctly or in any direction that he needed to be. But that doesn't mean this story is over. It just, it's kind of just getting started. Because then we have David. Kind of the polar opposite of what Saul was, right? Not necessarily a man of the people. A lowly shepherd boy that's on his own the vast majority of the time. But one who matches God's qualifications. Who matches God's idea of what to do and where to be. So God doesn't just always let them bring themselves into a pit. But he gives them someone who will actually lead the correct way. In no way, in no way was David perfect. We have plenty of situations to where plenty of situations where David screws up. But in essence, he's named a man after God's own heart for a purpose. Because he leads Israel in this direction that is a lot better than Solomon's. And he teaches his kids to do the same. Sure, a lot of David's kids end up kind of rough. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of different stories. Pretty interesting. Don't want to get into it. It's very graphic. But then he brings Solomon as king. After him, who, wisest man on earth, right? Think this, this should be the end of the story. This should be, now we have a lot of good kings because God loves us, right? But at the end of the day, Solomon falls into the exact same trap that everyone else did before him. And I think that's the major part of this entire section, is he immediately then takes, what, thousands and thousands of concubines, hundreds of wives, depending on, like, there's different mixtures of this whole number that I don't have written down in my notes, actually. And he does the exact same thing, lets those borders close in on him, and does, worships other gods, takes other customs, does other things. And Solomon is an interesting one to learn from here. Israel and Solomon both made the same mistakes. They rejected God, they moved on to the things of the world. Whether that be worshiping other gods, taking other customs, intermingling when they shouldn't have been intermingling. One thing, I can see Israel falling for this. And when I, when I really search my head with Solomon, I can see Israel falling for that. Right? They've been doing it for history. But we are talking about the wisest man in the world who let himself slip into becoming like society. We're talking the guy, literally the wisest man ever. Still falls for that. And a lot of the times, we do that same thing. We think ourselves wise. We think ourselves ready to take on more responsibility, to take on the things that we probably never should. And we think we're powerful enough to stop it, but the wisest man in the world wasn't. The wisest, most powerful king in Israel's history still couldn't do it. And this ushers a time of God saying, all right, this is what you've decided to do. We'll learn more about that in next week, and we'll go on to some of the, the falls and how Israel exits this time of up and down, and war kind of just goes into a time of down. There are some ups in there, but very little compared to the ups and downs they had before. So, in essence, what is this whole lesson? It's a lot of history. It's a lot of looking back. Well, the three things I really want to take, uh, take you to take away from this today. One, Israel's not so different than us. We fall in these same traps. When we read these stories, it's not to be looked at. Yes, it is to be looked at as some sort of history, but not a dead history. 
A history that we just keep repeating. A history that has a lot to do with us today. Two, don't try to grasp things and decide things on your, your own. When we come into ourselves, when we make a decision as a family, as a church, as anything, as a group, and we reject God out of it, we have these problems that arise. These unexpected consequences, because we're not that smart sometimes. God is. He knows the past, present, and future. He's the one to go to. And three, society has never once led the church in the right direction. They have never led a Christian family in the right direction. They have never led anyone to Christ. Christ leads people to Christ. So if we're letting things sweep in and take over us, we will end up in a place we don't want to be, that we never foresaw. I don't know the future. God does. But overall, I guess there is a fourth thing. Remember, God doesn't abandon us. No matter how many times this were fell, they were brought back like that. Some were longer than others. But at the end of the day, God's chosen people did exactly what God wanted them to. At the end of the day, even after they fell entirely, Jesus still was born there. He still ministered there and spread the love of Christ to the rest of the world. So even if we fall, there is redemption. Even when, when we screw up or try to take things on our own, God still remains giving us David after Saul. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you we could be here and worship you. I thank you that you give us the opportunity to come to you in our times of need and give us the answers that we need in our lives. I pray that we may learn to lean on you. That instead of relying on our own hearts and minds, that we surrender to you and have you lead us in the direction to give us our good leaders, to give us our good structure. And I pray that the world might not overtake us, but we might overcome, that we know you have overcome the world. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please stand as we sing our last hymn together?
May the God who is powerful, who knows the future, who knows the ways he would like you to go, lead you this week exactly where he wants you to be. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great Sunday, everybody.